As I mentioned previously, there are three major roles in the creation of video games, game design, game art, and game programming. We're going to put most of our focus on game programming, but before we start writing code, we should take a closer look at the game design of our project to get an overview of our programming goals. Game design is more art than science, and like many areas of art, such as the visual arts or music, it is possible to identify and implement patterns that usually work better than others. In our game, we have a few things that we can identify as game mechanics. A game mechanic is an atomic interaction with the game world, such as the frog hopping around, or the ability to collect a fly, or the ability for the frog to be eaten by the bird. In chess, a mechanic might be the ability to move a piece, or the ability to only move certain pieces in a specific pattern. When game mechanics come together to form situations where the player must make a strategic decision, it's called gameplay. Good gameplay comes from the player making a decision based on incomplete information and then learning from the outcome of their decision. For example, in the game we're creating, the player must decide between the reward of capturing more flies versus the risk of getting eaten by the bird and losing the game. The game state changes from moment to moment, so the player has to make the best decision they can with the information they have at the time. In a more complex game like chess, the player is trying to balance defensive and offensive moves based on the current state of the game, the strategy the other player is exhibiting, and many other factors. Even though all board positions are known, the player doesn't know what their opponent will do next. The job of a game designer is to create a set of mechanics that create an interesting variety of player decisions that can impact the outcome of the game. The creative process of deciding how to come up with different game mechanics and turn them into exciting gameplay is a much bigger topic, so we'll leave that for another time. For now, we know that we have a few big mechanics we need to write code for. The player should be able to hop around the environment. The player should not be able to go beyond the bounds of the environment. The player should be able to collect flies. The player should be able to see how many flies they've collected. New flies should spawn when the total number of flies is below a certain number. The bird should be able to chase the player. The bird should be able to eat the player. And the player should be able to lose the game and restart. We will also need to do a bit of programming to add sound and to make the game follow the physical rules of the world, such as gravity. Wow, that sounds like a lot, and it is, but breaking up the process step by step like this is a good approach. We can create one piece of functionality at a time, see how it plays in the game, and then add another piece of functionality or change what we've already made. This process of designing and testing is the essence of creating a great video game. You'll want to play your game a lot while you're building it so that you get a sense of how it's coming together. That way you'll be able to rapidly iterate and change the game based on what it feels like to actually play it. 